2019. We're continuing in the year of people. What is people? Well, I, you as a people, I'm as a people. Oh, yeah, no, that's not, that's not exactly what I mean. What is people? People is an acrostic. It stands for pursuing everyone openly, passionately, lovingly, and effectively. People. And that is pretty much what we are called. Listen, when you say yes to Christ, you become a peopler. That is just it. You know that becoming saved is all about you. So what we're going to talk about today, two words, power and authority. Power, the Greek word is dunamis and authority, exousia. Power, and, let me tell you this, you as born again, blood-bought Christians have both power and authority, whether or not you walk in it. There's so much more in our accounts than we actually take yeah. advantage of. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say each and every person in here, including myself, has spiritual resources that we're not accessing and that we're not taking advantage. Listen, Jesus died already 2,000 years ago mm -hmm. to place it into your account or place it into his account and then give you a check for it. What's the check? The name of Jesus. To use it, and it's as though we're dying of spiritual malnutrition. Okay. So power and authority. Power and authority. Dunamis and uh, exousia. Luke 4.36 says, Then they were all amazed. So Jesus did something. He cast out a demon. And then they were all amazed and spoke among themselves, saying, What word uh, this is? For with both authority and power, he commands the unclean spirits. And they come out. So Jesus had both authority and power. Luke 9, 1 says, Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them both power and authority over all demons and to cure all diseases. So both power and authority were transferred to the disciples. So let's look at authority. For what is authority? This guy has authority on behalf of whatever municipality or county or whatever he represents. He has authority. And that authority says, if he commands you to stop in the name of the law, you are now constricted by the law. Okay? You are now So he has authority. So when we say something in the name of Jesus, whatever we are speaking against is now constricted constricted by the power of that name. Sometimes criminals want to act up, though. So not only does he have authority, he also has power. Look on his right hip. That's his power. So if you don't obey the authority, the authority gives him the right to use the power on the side of his hip. Okay? We have authority in the name of Jesus. What's our power? The Holy Spirit. Because sometimes devils want to act up. And just in case you're not confident in your authority, they will buck. Sometimes they will buck. And you need to drop power on them. Power. What is power? The presence of the Holy Spirit. When's the first time we see the Holy Spirit? Genesis. God creates heaven and earth, and the Spirit of God was brooding, just waiting, brooding. Then God spoke, and that power was released. In order for the church to be the church, we have to have not only authority, but power. What did Jesus tell the disciples before he ascended? What did he say? You wait in Jerusalem until, until what? Until you are imbued, but I'm going to use the word infused. Until you are infused with what? Power.
If they needed it then, do you need it now? Because you can you walk around exercising the authority in the name all day long, but sometimes you need the power. A po- okay. Amen. 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 You know what we're going to do? This we're going to do a quick exercise this morning. So we will end up praying for each other. I want. I love it when we do that. But I'm going to read something to you. It's, everybody know the Lord's prayer. <laughs> Lord's prayer. The Lord's prayer is. Listen, I'm going to say the Lord's prayer is not. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That is the prayer that the Lord taught to the disciples. I agree, absolutely. But the prayer of the Lord is found in John 17. That is the Lord's prayer. So I'm going to read the entire prayer, but there's a couple of verses in that prayer that I want us to take a look at. So I'm going to read that entire prayer. John 17, starting in verse 1. Jesus spoke these words, lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that your son also may glorify you. As you have given him authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you've given him. And this is eternal life. I love this. This is eternal life. What is eternal life? That you may know, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. So if you know them, you have eternal life. Okay? I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. I, he says, I have finished the work. He speaking prophetically. Because it's not yet finished. He still has to go to the cross. And now, O oh Father, glorify me together with yourself with the glory which I had with you before the world was. I have manifested your name to the men whom you have given me out of the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they have known that all things which you have given me are from you, for I have given them the words which you have given me, and they have received them. And have known surely that I came forth from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world. But for those whom you have given me. For they are yours. And all are mine. I'm sorry. All mine are yours. And yours are mine. And I am glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world. But these are in the world. And I come to you. Holy Father, keep through your name those whom you've given me, that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those whom you've given me, I have kept, and none of them is lost, except the son of perdition, that scripture might be fulfilled. But now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they have not known, because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Here's something so key. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you would keep them safe from the evil one. This is why the church hadn't been evacuated yet. This is why you weren't raptured as soon as you got saved because he needs you here they are not of the world just as i am not of the world sanctify them by your truth your word is truth as you sent me into the world i also have sent them into the world and for their sakes i sanctify myself that they may also be sanctified by the truth Jesus says here that he sanctified himself for you and for me. Is there any wonder why we as Christians are called to live a sanctified life? Because if he sanctified himself for you, shouldn't you sanctify yourself for the sake of those you minister to? Yeah. Amen. 
Next verse. This is very key for you and me. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. So he was praying directly also for Word of Grace Christian Church. That they may all be one as you, Father, are in me, and I in you. They also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. And for their sakes, okay, now that was verse 17. And the glory which you gave me, I have given them, that they may be one just as we are one, I in them, you and me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that you have sent me. I have loved them as you have loved me. Father, I desire that they also, whom you gave me, may be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which you have given me. For you loved me before the foundation of the world. And he wraps up by saying, O righteous Father, the world has not known you, but I have known you. And these have known that you sent me. And I have declared to them your name and will declare it that the love which, with which you loved me may be in them and I in them. But a couple of key verses in there. Number one, he says, I sanctify myself for them. Hmm. You were made holy. You were made righteous. You were sanctified. But we need to walk out what we were made. And it's not only for yourself, but it is for those around you. Why? Do you know that people are watching you? Just waiting for you to mess up. So they can say, I told you them Christians wasn't about nothing. One of the things I, I, I just never, ever want to do is to bring shame upon my Lord. I don't ever want to ruin my testimony. And this is, this is not a fear thing. I'm not afraid of doing it. What I'm just telling you, I'm not going to do it. I, I, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I'm just not going to do it. And I'm getting better at walking into that. Notice I said I'm getting better. I'm not like all of you who are already there. <laughs> I thank you, everyone who's shaking your head, no, because I know nobody's there. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, that they also may be sanctified by the truth. Now, another key verse, 1722. And the glory which you gave me, I have given them that they may be one just as we are one. He said, but the glory. Yeah. Right. You remember earlier in this prayer, he said, I finished the work. He was speaking prophetically. I think he was speaking prophetically here as well. I'm going to try to prove that to you. And the glory. And the glory. We're talking about power and authority. Power and authority. Authority comes through the name of Jesus. Okay, that is, but the power comes through the Holy Spirit. Okay. John 7, 37 says this. On the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, said, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me. And drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living waters. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing in him would receive, for the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. Yes. Okay? I want you to focus on the last part of that sentence. Because Jesus was not yet glorified. Yes. Jesus prayed, The glory that you've given me, I have given them. The glory you've given me, I've given them. One of the jobs of the Holy Spirit is to conform us to the image of Christ. Okay? But he wasn't given because Jesus was not yet 
glorified. Jesus did not come for you to become good people. Jesus did not come for you to help your neighbor with her trash. Jesus didn't come for you to help old ladies or old men across the street. The devil can do that. A heathen can do that. Jesus came to marry divinity to mankind. You don't believe me? In Ephesians, the Apostle Paul says, Husbands, love your wives. Wives, respect, honor. I'm actually talking about Christ in the church. He came to marry the church. When I married Catherine, everything that I have and am becomes hers. Likewise, everything that she has and am is <laughs> becomes mine. If your spouse is sitting next to you, everything that you have becomes hers. Everything that she has becomes yours. You are one. In order for that to take place, there is a working of the Holy Spirit in your life that weaves us together in such a way that you can't be separated and that raises you up to the level to be on par with what Christ says you are to be. Christ is the head, we're the body. You do not see the head of a man on the body of a gorilla. The two are not compatible. Just not compatible. You're not going to see the head of a man on the body of a boa constrictor. They're not compatible. Jesus is the head, we are the body. The Holy Spirit is responsible for making that work. How does he do it? I have no idea. You're going to ask him when we get there. I got a feeling you're not going to care, though. <laughs> so, power and authority. Authority is given in the name of Jesus, and power is with the Holy Spirit. In order to, to be the church, we have to exercise both. And I think it is becoming more and more important now. I see articles every day about people leaving the church. Sometimes very prominent people. I just read an article. One of, one of Hillsong's songwriters just said, I'm walking away from the church. I just, as I'm reading that article, part of it was, number one, you don't see no more miracles anymore. And nobody talks about it. There's too many contradictions in the Bible. And nobody, yeah, listen. If the church would really be the church, Amen. The, uh, I would say there's probably a very small percentage of the church that truly believes in divine healings. I would say, man, probably, I'm just, just a guess, don't, but probably, I'm going to say less than half. Less than half. But if the half that did believe in it walked in the power and authority of it, the other half that didn't believe wouldn't have any choice but to acknowledge it. Okay? In order to address some of the things that we're going to be faced with, and let me say, the, the early church, the first century church, they had their own problems that they dealt with, but they dealt with it with arms locked with the Holy Spirit in order to face the things that we're going to face and that we are facing. If we don't lock arms with the Holy Spirit, we're going to be overrun by the enemy. Because quite frankly, you, you can sit there and, and yell and scream in the authority of the name all you want to, but unless you have the power behind it, unless you have the power behind it, not everyone's going to listen. Not everyone listens to the police officer when he says stop or halt. 
in the name of the law. <laughs> but let him shoot you in the butt. You'll listen. <laughs> you drop the Holy Spirit on something. And he... And quite frankly, there are certain things that are in our lives, that are lives of our family, that have been there for so long that they have become accustomed to them. And quite frankly, in their minds, the name of Jesus doesn't rank that high. So while you have all confidence in the world in that name and someone can speak to you in the name of Jesus and you believe it and you receive it in your heart because you give such a weight to it, a weightiness to it, but you have other family members who don't, for those family members, you're going to need the Holy Spirit to step in. And I'm going to say something that is honestly mind-boggling. You're not going to ask him to do anything that he's not willing to do. If you see a covenant violation, what's a covenant violation? Someone's sick, you see someone in poverty, I'm, a covenant violation. And you come in with the authority of the name, the Holy Spirit is right there to back you up. Yes. You have to have power and authority. And I, I can't say this enough. Jesus didn't come to make bad people good. He came to make dead people alive. Okay. That's, that's, that was the true purpose. He came to bring life to a dying world and to connect you back up to the source of life. That's now. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we're going to do a prayer exercise, but before we do it, I'm going to read another section of scripture to you out of Acts chapter 19, 1, 9, Acts 19. I also think our Bibles have been mislabeled. At the beginning of the book of Acts, it says what? The Acts of the Apostles. Listen, I, listen, I, I, I honor the Apostles. But the book of Acts is truly the acts of the Holy Spirit through the apostles. And the book of Acts is still being written today. But it's the acts of the Holy Spirit through the church. Acts 19.1. And it happened when Apollos was at Corinth that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus. And finding some disciples, he said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So they said to him, we have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. <laughs> I just love that. <laughs> hey, have you guys received the Holy Spirit? Man, we ain't never heard of no Holy Spirit. Okay. All right. And he said unto them, what then were you baptized? So they said, into John's baptism. Then Paul said, John indeed baptized you with the baptism of repentance. John, so basically, John baptized you so that you would be good people. Right? He, he baptized into repenting against throwing your trash in your neighbor's yard. That was John's baptism. John indeed baptized you with the baptize, baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe in him who would come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. So I'm baptizing you into repentance, but you got to believe on this new guy. When they heard this, they were then baptized another way. They were baptized in, I like to say into, into the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. Okay. I, I love the fact, I love the way that John teaches the youth. Everybody knows John, our youth minister. And listen, everybody up in here, whether you know it or not, you is Pentecostal. Okay? 
you is Pentecostal. One of the one of the things I believe that we've done in the Pentecostal church is we've placed so much emphasis on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We place so much emphasis on speaking in tongues as a result of baptism of the Holy Spirit that it has driven some people away. And not only that, it has caused our focus to change from what it really should be. Okay, tongues is important, but what's the most important? We are to focus on what? Presence over the outcome. The presence of the Holy Spirit should be far more important to you than the outcome of speaking in tongues. The presence of the Holy Spirit should be so much more prominent to you than that the outcome should look like that. Amen. Right? Because quite frankly, there's a lot of gifts that the Holy Spirit brings. Speaking in tongues is just one of them. Okay, let me try this. This side over here. There's a lot of gifts that the Holy Spirit brings. Speaking in tongues is just one of them. Amen. <laughs> I guess this side is safe. <laughs> but what I want us to focus on more than, than the, the, the outcome that we get is, is the union with in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Don't get me wrong. I, I kind of have this discussion with my wife a lot about praying in tongues. One of the things I love about praying in tongues, and again, I, I don't want to, I want praying in tongues to be the small up there. What I enjoy about praying in tongues for me is it, is it stirs up and moves the dirt out of the way. Yes. Yes. Okay? Whether you know it or not, as you walk through life, you're getting hit with, with the mud and the crud of life. You know, people, people are at your work or not doing what they're supposed to do and People in your family may not be doing what you're supposed to do. And the person at 66 just, not only did he cut you off, but he flipped you off at the same time. I'm just saying, we get the crud and the dud on us, the the, the dirt and the muck on. And for me, if you're praying in tongues, it's just like, you, ah, and all of it flies away. So it's important for me to do that. And again, but what's more important is that I have the presence of the Holy Spirit with me. And not only that, that I acknowledge the presence of the Holy Spirit. In order to yield to the Holy Spirit, you need time with Him. You need time with Him. You need time with Him. Two people, same church. One person's been at that church for 50 years. Spends two or three minutes with the Holy Spirit every Sunday right after his favorite song. Brand new Christian, been saved, nine months. Spends hours every day in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Who's more yielded, the 50-year-old Christian or the nine-month-old Christian? Okay. We just intuitively know that the more we spend time, I'm, I'm, I'm... Driving this nail home so hard because in order for the church to be the church, we have to have the Holy Spirit have his place in our lives. And if we don't let the Holy Spirit have his place, we can never take our place. We have to be completely yielded and focus on the presence more than the outcome. Okay? Okay? Jesus said this. When you pray, believe you receive, and you shall have. Then he went on to say, therefore I say. He was putting into action what the thing he just said, okay? When you pray, believe you receive, okay? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who those, those who ask, hallelujah. We got one Bible scholar at least. <laughs> no, a room full of Bible scholars. I know that. Okay. Everyone here today, you can ask later. I want you to receive today. Okay. 